No, no, no. We're not doing that today, sorry. For the longest time growing up, Resident Evil 5 was probably one of my most loved video games. I was introduced to the Resident Evil franchise at a pretty young age when I would watch my father play, but I didn't get my hands on one until Resident Evil 5 was released for the PlayStation 3. Looking back at it these days, it's a pretty goofy game. The Magini that guard the tricep base are for some reason really good at using guns, and the protagonist, Chris Redfield, struggles to turn wheels without his companion, but somehow manages to move literal boulders in the middle of a volcano with his bare fists. But today, I don't want to talk about how dumb or goofy the game is, I don't want to talk about the insanely inhuman build that Chris has. Today, I want to talk about his companion, Sheva Alomar. Because who the fuck is Sheva? Where did she come from? Where did she go? And will we ever see her again? Stop, we're not, we're not doing that. So let's start with the basics. Who the fuck is Sheva Alomar? Working in the West African branch of the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, which we're gonna call the BSAA, Sheva is an agent whose job is to combat bioterrorism. Pretty interesting job, right? Well, just like any character that has more than five minutes of airtime, screen time, game time, whatever you want to call it, Sheva has a backstory. According to in-game files, Sheva grew up through a time of regional instability in West Africa as Soviet-backed paramilitary forces gave way to quasi-nationalist guerrilla warfare. What does this mean? Basically, the Soviet Union enabled a group of illegal militants to engage in warfare with the goal of winning popular support and political influence in parts of West Africa. While we do see this kind of conflict in our reality, the conflict we're talking about here is completely fictional. Anyways, Sheva was fortunate enough to be living in a safe area a little bit away from the conflict in a rural company town where the majority of residents worked at Umbrella's nearby number 57 plant. If you know anything about Resident Evil, you already know where this is going. When Umbrella conducted an experiment using the T-Virus in 1994, a worker at plant number 57 was infected and an outbreak occurred. The outbreak eventually got so bad that Umbrella ordered their security service to eliminate the town's entire population in order to prevent the biohazard threat from escalating, whilst also conveniently silencing witnesses. Classic Umbrella. Sheva was successful in hiding during the massacre and was rescued by her uncle the day after, but mentally, you can only imagine where she was at and what she might think of Umbrella for the rest of her life, right? Well, here's where things get crazy. Just a few months after being rescued by her uncle, she ran away in desperate search for her former home. This eight-year-old kid running through the savannah searching for a home that doesn't exist anymore? They broke that poor girl. She made her way out into the savannah before collapsing in the cold of the night at which point she was rescued by guerrilla fighters operating in the area after they found her on a patrol. Whilst being looked after, Sheva was radicalized by the guerrilla fighters and spent the next few years of her life training as a child soldier. Fast forward to the year 2001, Sheva caught the attention of some British and American spies that were operating in the region who understood that she had been radicalized and came up with a plan. They informed Sheva of a weapons deal between Umbrella and the guerrillas and asked for her help stopping them, to which Sheva agreed by unlocking doors for them to raid through and wearing a wire to record evidence of the deal. Long story short, an American military special operations unit known as the Anti-Umbrella Pursuit and Investigation Team raided the building. That's a really long name. They raided the building, thwarted the deal, and detained Sheva and the guerrillas. After a couple of days in detention, Sheva was freed with a US passport courtesy of the American spy and a plane ride across the pond to start a new life. So if this is her new life, how did she manage to go almost full circle and become a BSAA agent? Well, after Sheva graduated university over in the States, the spy that saved her, who was now her legal guardian by the way, had already received a position within the Bioterrorism Assessment Committee, and he basically just told her, hey, there's a job going, you should apply. So she enlisted to the BSAA, passed her training, and was assigned to our beloved Josh Stone's unit. I know that part feels very brushed over, like she just happened to apply for the BSAA because the spy that saved her when she was 15 told her to, but that's all we have on that. Okay, so, now we know who Sheva Alomar is, let's say we get back to the game, huh? Resident Evil 5 is set in Kijuju, West Africa, which by the way is not a real place, it's completely fictional. I did find a place with a similar name on Google Maps, but that was in Uganda, which of course is not West Africa. Moving on, her experience as a skilled operative who has a knack for combat and reconnaissance made her the perfect candidate to be Chris Redfield's partner for one of Sheva's favourite missions, stopping a bioweapon arms deal. 
The two met up, grabbed their smuggled in sidearms, and got the lowdown from Reynard Fisher, who was a local BSAA agent with concerns about the suspected arms dealer Ricardo Irving being in cahoots with something called the Ouroboros Project. What do you know about Ouroboros? And that's the last we'll hear from that guy, because not soon after that, his head was rolling on the floor. But I'm not here to explain to you what happened in Resident Evil 5, you'd be better off playing the damn game than listening to me. I'm here to talk about the importance of Sheva's involvement on this mission with Chris. So, as the mission went on, Chris and Sheva encountered bio-organic weapons, or BOWs for short, over, and over, and over. And despite all of the casualties they faced, Chris and Sheva pressed on. But there's not really much else to it as far as Sheva's importance in this mission goes. I mean, at one point, Chris literally disobeys orders to search for his ex-partner Jill Valentine because he believes she was still alive and Sheva just agrees to it. She's nothing more than a sidekick on Chris's journey, which we kind of knew from the start, but even going as far as to accompany him on a side quest to find Jill, despite being told not to, is just unfortunate. She could have been so much more than this, especially with everything we know about her life before joining the BSAA, but up to this point she's been nothing but a shadow with a gun and an earpiece full of intel. That being said, there are little tidbits where she provides context to the story that we wouldn't know without her, such as when she recognizes Excelgeon as being head of Tricell's African division in a cutscene. Mr. Redfield, how nice to finally make your acquaintance. Who the hell are you? So, now what? Well, actually there's not that much at all. Sheva's story isn't explored any further after the game ends, and she isn't even involved in the DLC Lost in Nightmares or Desperate Escape. The only mention of her I could find after Resident Evil 5 was in Resident Evil 6 where she sent an email to Piers Nivens, a BSAA soldier working under Chris Redfield at the time, stating, I was very sad to hear of Chris's recent disappearance. He was such a large part of the BSAA, and he was a very important person to me as well. Please let me know if there is anything I can do to help. The BSAA West African branch is always here for your support. I guess you could consider this a nod to potential future appearances from Sheva, but Resident Evil 6 was released so long ago, and yet we have nothing involving her. I personally thought that maybe, just maybe, there would be some kind of cameo appearance in the Resident Evil series released on Netflix in 2022, since it was set in South Africa, not being too far from West Africa. But the show isn't canon, there was no nod to her whatsoever, and the show was even cancelled after one season because it was so bad. So, that was that. A lot of fans have showed their interest in seeing a potential return for Sheva Alomar in future Resident Evil titles, either as a playable character or just as a cameo appearance. Some believe she will continue her work with the BSAA, potentially working in different regions since her time with Chris exposed her to what bioterrorism can look like on a global scale, but others, with myself included, hope for a storyline that explores her journey after the Kajuju mission and allows for character development in greater depth. After all, we know all about her life before and during the Kajuju mission, we just don't have answers for where she went after. To round things up, here are some fun facts about Sheva Alma I managed to find that you might not know yet. Sheva is bilingual, being fluent in both English and Swahili, which allows her to communicate with the local authorities, civilians, and others. There are even voice lines of Sheva speaking Swahili during combat. Sheva is left-handed, and this meant that her mocap actor, Karen Dyer, had to learn to shoot left-handed, because in real life, Karen is right-handed. By the way, Karen Dyer is an absolute badass. She performed all of Sheva's stunts for motion capture, despite being offered a stunt double. This channel is officially a Karen Dyer fan page. And here is a photo of Sheva's BSAA ID card, found on the Japanese supplemental website for Resident Evil 5, the BSAA remote desktop. By the way, this website is no longer live so you can't access it by normal means, but if you were hoping to play around with it, you can still find it via the Wayback Machine, which I will put a link to in the description of this video. Just bear in mind that everything is in Japanese. But that's about it. Capcom really did Sheva dirty by not giving her any further attention after Resident Evil 5. But who knows, maybe we'll see her in the coming future. Only time will tell. If you want to watch my full playthrough of Resident Evil 5 co-op, I streamed it live on my Twitch channel and have combined all of the VODs into one huge video on my YouTube channel. If you want to see more videos like this one, then feel free to subscribe. I'm hoping to produce more deep dive videos like this over the coming months. So if that's your sort of thing, then hopefully I'll see you in the next one. I'd also love to hear what your thoughts are on Sheva's potential future. 
Do you think we'll be seeing her anytime soon? Let me know in the comments.